All right, folks, it's 12.30 sharp. I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is Bill Murphy with ASP Quick Supply and Bowman Construction Supply. Thank you for joining us. Today's webinar will be uh, featuring AquaBlock, and I'll introduce the speaker here in a moment. I see a lot of familiar names on here that are joining us, but for those that are new, welcome to a Zoom webinar. And if you've done Zoom webinars, you're aware that you're just a participant. You're not going to be on camera, and you're not going to be on audio. So go ahead and sing and dance, and uh, yeah, don't bother putting on a collared shirt. So I'm hosting this eighth in our series, this eighth webinar in our series, and I'm excited to say that we've had uh, a lot of regular attendees, and every week we do get someone new. So as an order of business, I've disabled the chat feature because that often pops up on the screen in front of a speaker. So we encourage the use of the Q&A. If you're not familiar with that, go ahead and start playing with the controls, looking around on your screen there. You can change your view, but none of us are going to be on camera today. It's going to be audio only. And as you send in your Q&A, they won't appear to everyone else. It'll only appear to me and the panelists, our speaker. And we will answer those questions as we can throughout the presentation. And by the end of the presentation, we'll leave a little time. We'll be done at one hour sharp. And if there's time to answer the questions, we will. And no matter what, I will capture all questions that you submit with the Q&A. And we will answer every one of them in writing. And we'll send that out to all the attendees. The other thing you'll note, and we'll repeat this at the end, is that we'll send out a survey monkey to you. Real simple, two questions. We're just going to ask you, uh, what projects you have that you might be interested in getting some help or considering the solutions you learn about today. And the other one will be asking for your feedback on this webinar and any suggestions for future webinars. And any general questions that you didn't get to ask during the Q&A, you can ask with that Survey Monkey as well. We take the results of the Survey Monkey and we send out PDH certificates to everyone. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with the presentation here. If I can click on this slide. ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply Company, and Bowman Construction Supply. For those of you that are already familiar with us, we are in eight states. We have offices located in uh, all of these areas or very nearby. We've got about 30 professional sales staff inside and outside support. And I'm going to go contrary to this slide, and I do it every time. We have actually about 50 years in business. And I am sitting in Quick Supply Company in Des Moines, Iowa right now. And our ASP Enterprises locations are St. Louis, Kansas City, Omaha, Wichita. We have three Bowman Construction Supply offices in Colorado, in Denver, Longmont, and Colorado Springs. A number of CPEST on staff. We have one professional engineer. That's me. I'm not a consulting engineer anymore, although I was for a very long time. My job is to help other engineers, landscape architects, contractors, owners, city, county, states, feds, um, solve problems and find out whatever solutions we have that can fit or I send them other directions as well. So I give uh, free engineering advice and we have over 9,000 customers. So there's another slide I need to update. We are very good at logistics. We have a lot of trucks, a lot of semis, a lot of straight trucks. We make deliveries every day. You may hear some noise in the background because I'm actually in an office in a warehouse and we are very busy. We had um, ridiculously busy months of March, April, May, and now into June as well. And I'm just blessed, or I think we're all blessed and grateful to be a part of the essential construction industry. It has kept us all very active during this pandemic. I hope you and yours are doing well. And uh, please, if you haven't visited any of our locations, please do so. Uh, if we're not busy running around loading trucks and taking orders, we'd love to show you around. And we have a lot of uh, the commodity products that you see here. I specialize in our engineered products. We have a lot of solutions that are primarily considered part of low impact development or green infrastructure. Also continually seeking to improve road-based stabilization, uh, stream bank stabilization, erosion control, sediment control. And I'm blessed to work with a lot of the leading manufacturers around the world. And these are just a few of them. And AquaBlock is on this list. And with that, I'm gonna hand the controls over here in just a minute after I first introduce him. This is a guy I've known in our industry for uh, many years. He has a lot of experience in the construction industry. Andy Durham is our presenter from AquaBlock, and he has, uh, like me, been a civil engineering consultant. He is a registered professional engineer in Florida, which I'm not, and he has a lot of experience with uh, sales and marketing with a number of other companies, and he just recently joined AquaBlock, which was a company we were already familiar with and we've had a long relationship with, so it was just a perfect fit for us. And with that, Andy, I'm going to hand over controls to you, and it'll say, give controls to Andy. And if you unmute yourself, you can uh, 
finish the introduction. Great. Can you hear me, Bill? Sounds good. If you speak up a little bit and I'll turn up my speaker, we're good. Okay, great. Perfect. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Uh, thanks, Bill. I appreciate the uh, introduction. And yes, I spent about 14 years in civil consulting, engineering, doing everything from residential site development, commercial, some water, wastewater, even solid waste. Uh, eight years in sales and marketing of infrastructure, construction products, including erosion control and geosynthetic materials. Uh, have owned a specialty construction company to do geosynthetic installation, but just joined AquaBlock in uh, um, April of this year as the geotechnical sales manager. Uh, very, um, feel very fortunate to be able to work with um, um, ASP and Quick Supply and Bowman and uh, give you guys some information on this product today. I know they've had a lot of success selling AquaBlock and uh, it's a great solution for a lot of different uh, kind of applications and I want to go over a lot of those today. So what we're going to talk about today with AquaBlock is understanding some of the properties of bentonite coated aggregate, which will be the technical term for, uh, for AquaBlock, um, and its relevance to civil and geotechnical applications. We're going to learn about the AquaBlock advantage, what makes AquaBlock stand apart, and some of the geotechnical properties for its performance. Uh, want to become familiar with some basic Geotechnical applications, uh, where AquaBlock can be an ideal solution. Uh, definitely want to show you some successful installations. And then a little bit about the packaging, installation, uh, remote manufacturing of AquaBlock. So those things that we're going to cover in this webinar today. So we'll start out a little bit, um, Bentonite 101. Just talk a little bit about uh, what an amazing material it is. Um, definitely formed from <clears throat> volcanic ash, deposition. Uh, you may not know that 70% of the world's known deposits of bentonite are in the state of Wyoming, and we source all that out of Lovell, Wyoming. Uh, so it's mined, surface mined, 50 feet, and um, it's an amazing material because it can swell up to 16 times its original size and absorb 10 times its weight in water. Uh, so really neat material uh, that naturally occurs and uh, I've been asked before, well, what is the, what is the supply of bentonite like, supply of bentonite like um, for the next, uh, you know, generation? And we won't run out of it in any of our lifetimes. So there's, um, uh, even based on increased demand of bentonite, there's plenty of supply in those Wyoming surface mines. So what's so great, what makes bentonite work and why is it uh, such an amazing material? And it really goes down to the chemistry of it and, and that, you know, the chemical and physical makeup of the material is really what makes it special. So we're dealing with cations and they're tetrahedral and octahedral cations. And that's important because those two shapes make up these continuously you know, oscillating sheets of, uh, of molecules. So instead of, you know, just jumbled particles, we actually have a geometrical sheet formation. And when those sheets are compressed, uh, we've got, you know, free floating sodium cations within that makeup. And when water mixes with those sodium cations, it almost explodes those sheets. And that's what causes the swelling and the water absorption is when all of those water molecules mix in with the, the free floating sodium cations and break that sheet apart, kind of split it. That's what really makes bentonite uh, work its magic. So it really comes down to the kind of the chemical slash physiological features of the molecules itself within that clay material bentonite. So a neat material. And what do we use bentonite for? Well, there's two types of bentonite. Uh, your calcium bentonite is more of your, you know, home uh, homeopathic type material that gets used in cosmetics and food production and things like that. We're more um, focused on sodium bentonite, or we're exclusively focused on sodium bentonite. So, sodium bentonite is your industrial civil type material used in pond sealing, foundry sands. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with geosynthetic clay liners, where you've got bentonite in powder form, basically stitched between um, 
multiple layers of woven or non-woven geotextiles. And then drilling mud is essentially, you know, slurry bentonite. So we've got a lot of industrial uses for bentonite, and that's what is the main component of our aqua block um, bentonite coated aggregate. So I want to talk a little bit about the civil applications for bentonite. And when I'm talking about bentonite here, I'm talking about it in its, you know, raw powdered form. And so since it swells and absorbs water and becomes pasty, uh, it can be used for a lot of good civil applications. Slurry cutoff walls, although it's very messy to install, uh, lining ponds. But if you can see in that picture on the top right, it comes in bag format most, most of the time. And it can be a kind of a pain to install that over a large pond area. Uh, it can be a big mess in plugging wells. And then on the bottom left, I don't know if they even try that. Uh, whoever was dumping that in was trying to get the bentonite to sink to the bottom of that pond and seal upon it. And I don't think that's going to work. So this is why the AquaBlock product is special because we've created a better bentonite. And essentially what we've done is taken our powdered sodium bentonite and adhered it to a graded aggregate. And that graded aggregate is a number eight stone. So it's like a three eighths inch diameter stone or a pea gravel. And we use a basically a proprietary uh, cellulose binder that adheres the bentonite to the aggregate. So we have a composite particle, a bentonite coated aggregate. Um, so what that does is we've basically created a delivery system uh, for the bentonite in the form of the gravel. We can uniformly distribute it without the mess. Since it swells within that gravel base, it's self-compacting. Uh, it can be very uh, rapidly installed. Um, great flexibility and low cost on the installation. Uh, we can custom blend it. We can do different percentages of gravel and bentonite together for different types of applications. And based on that, we can vary the permeability of it. And it's very resilient, non-degrading. It will continuously, you know, rehydrate and swell again and again and again to hold in place. So it's a great material uh, by itself, bentonite. We've even just made it better. So why is it better? Well, we go back to that cutoff wall example that was a big mess. Now that we've got a delivery system with the bentonite coated gravel or aggregate, it can be poured right into a, a cutoff trench or a cutoff wall. Uh, for trench dams and anti-seep collars, uh, we can do that without compaction. So the material self-compacts when the bentonite swells within the void spaces of the aggregate and creates the ability to do <clears throat> all kinds of trench dams and anti-seep collars around complex shapes like pipes where you can self-compact without having to do additional mechanical compaction. And then what's great about it also is that we can seal ponds and line ponds sometimes without even dewatering because we can direct that bentonite coated gravel right to the spot that it needs to be delivered to instead of going in and doing mixing and compacting of powder bentonite with soil. So that's why, you know, just in a nutshell, the aqua block and the, the bentonite coated gravel is better. What's the aqua block advantage? It's a composite particle system. And like we said, it's self-compacting, but to get to a very, very low permeability. So imagine a 10 to the minus seven, maybe even a 10 to the minus eight or minus nine centimeters per second permeability without compaction. Uh, that in itself is amazing. So great applications there. Very simple and easy to install. Uh, very precise particle delivery. Again, um, not having to dewater a pond to be able to get aqua block in there to seal up a leak area against a dam that might be causing a seep on the other side. A very convenient packaging. Uh, we have two bulk bag sizes or smaller 50 pound bags. Um, and then we're manufactured all in the United States in Swanton, Ohio. And we have a very stringent quality control program in our manufacturing facility. Uh, so great product. Uh, that's made here and um, distributed through our valuable distribution network throughout the country.
just a little bit more about it and and imagine if you will uh like a chocolate covered peanut or a yogurt covered raisin so that's kind of what you're looking at or what it feels like you've got a piece of gravel that's got this bentonite coated around it in its dry state uh average particle size you know quarter inch to, th to three quarter inch but then it expands and can double its size in the uh in the swell and expansion um, it usually takes about 24 hours to fully hydrate and swell uh, so you can see the picture there in the bottom left and how much that uh, material has swollen uh, from the bentonite basically filling the void spaces of the agar and you can see what it looks like at the bottom of a pond so let's talk about a little bit about the properties for performance and we'll get into a little bit of the geotechnical properties. We'll talk about the dry state characteristics, uh, permeability, shear strength, and bearing capacity. And those, we we are put a lot of emphasis on the engineering properties and the technical validity of the product. And we do that because we have very reliable raw material sourcing. And we talked about the bentonite mining in uh, Wyoming. We have a very consistent manufacturing process some very, very good manufacturing quality control, and some of the best technical expertise in the marketplace. So that's how we've created such a unique, yet high quality product in AquaBlock. So let's talk a little bit about some of those performance properties. Um, first of all, dry state characteristics. So it's extremely important for us to be able to have a consistent swell, a consistently performing product, and that all comes down to the methodology in the formulation of it. So we do a lot of testing and quality control on the gradation analysis of the aggregate, our bulk dry density, our specific gravity. Um, it's very specific when we get into certain applications of the formulation of percentage of bentonite versus gravel and sieve size on the gravel, uh, percentage of fines. So we do a lot of work in the laboratory and making sure that we are defining these characteristics and holding to them in our manufacturing quality control. Permeability, now that's probably the most important uh, property of the aqua block because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to achieve. It's aqua block for a reason because it's a waterproofing sealing material. So most importantly, we need to make meet standards for hydraulic conductivity. And I talked about 10 to the minus seven, 10 to the minus eight. So we're using this ASTM standard to determine that. Um, we can do it with uh, uh, basically a falling or static head permeability test. And it's designed to be that low permeability sealing material. So that's one of the, the biggest properties that we emphasize is the permeability of aqua block. Um, shear strength. So this is a neat property because once you start to get away from uh, your powdered bentonites and your other slurry mixtures, you start to lose any kind of, you know, significant shear strength or shear strength. And so the gravel component of the aqua block provides that direct shear, provides that, um, that shear strength that can basically provide better slope stability, um, you know, better uh, uh, degrees of, of friction angle, so that it can be a, a great, <clears throat> um, it can be a, a, a great property to essentially ensure that the aqua block is going to stay in a, in a stabilized state on slopes and other constructed um, environments. And then, one of the neatest properties also is the bearing capacity. So basically when we've got a, uh, uh, an application where aqua block is being used under traffic loads, then we've actually got you know, good uh, bearing capacity with certain degrees of compaction. Now I said that aqua block self compacts and doesn't require compaction, but when you do compact it, it actually even dr drops the permeability down and creates some better bearing capacity. So we definitely are, are, um, have some great geotechnical properties that we can uh, uh, rely on when we're doing the manufacturing of the aqua block. 
So I want to get into some of the, the fun stuff about Aquablock. So where should Aquablock be used? And these are some of the great applications now that we know a little bit more about the material. Where low permeability is required in ponds and basins and containment areas. Anywhere where we don't want seepage uh, because we want to protect underlying groundwater. That's a great application for Aquablock. Uh, synthetic liner damages and repairs. Synthetic liner can be very expensive to go in and repair uh, and patch. And so Aquablock can be a great material to actually repair those liner materials. Uh, where groundwater flow must be stopped. So cut off trenches and walls, another great application. Um, basic redundancy in dams and flood walls. Um, maybe a, a semi-impervious fill behind a sheet pile or a concrete wall in a dam or floodway. Um, seepage, where seepage and piping is detrimental. Anti-seep collars, trench dams, uh, basically where we want to stop that internal erosion along pipelines. Uh, that's a great place for aqua block. Uh, pond liners are, synthetic pond liners are not easy to install in certain places and where it's hard to get a crew in or hard to get a liner trenched in, an aqua block pond liner or pond sealer can be a great application. Um, repairs, that's probably the number one uh, general application for aqua block, is going in and fixing things, fixing structures, fixing areas where wildlife has damaged infrastructure, muskrat holes, um, basically areas that have, have sloughed off from internal erosion, uh, p disjointed pipes, um, things like that. So anywhere where you've seen areas, uh, you know, that have been under hydraulic stresses and have been become damaged or become damaged by non-hydraulic stresses, Aquablock can be a great, great repair uh, material. Just to dive in a little bit long, um, deeper into some of these applications, uh, pond sealing. So it, not necessarily lining a new pond, although Aquablock can be a great application for that, but where ponds are leaking. So we get calls uh, day in, day out of uh, sandy soil, sandy lenses under what people thought were clay uh, materials and develop leaks and ponds are draining. And if we can pinpoint the area or at least a general area where that leak is occurring, then we can deliver the Aquablock straight to that area. We can fortify uh, the sides of dams where we might have seeps through it. So a great application for aqua block is pond sealing and pond lining. Um, and I see collars and trench dams. And I wanna emphasize this, Bill and I talked about this before the presentation. As a civil engineer, you need to be very cognizant about what your requirements are for seepage control along pipeline design. Even sanitary sewer lines, in relatively flat grades, a lot of jurisdictions, municipal, even state, will have minimum standards of pipe length that, um, that minimums before a, a, a trench dam or an anti-seep collar needs to be installed. So sometimes we'll see standard details from a jurisdiction uh, show on plans where it actually says every 400 feet, one of these trench dams or anti-seep collar needs to be placed and that doesn't show up on the plans and specs or the plans and profile. So there's uh, um, items that need to be bid uh, that aren't showing up on bid schedule. So be cognizant of that and Aquabot can be a, a very, very good alternative to concrete or bentonite soil mixes for anti-seep collars and trench dams. Uh, probably one of the, uh, the most, I guess, popular or, or most used uh, application is um, an seed collar or trench dam for aqua block. Uh, cutoff walls. Now, we're not talking about deep, deep um, cutoff walls where, you know, you'd have to do a slurry wall or even a, a deep driven sheet pile, but just simply where, you know, a six to eight foot hydraulic barrier needs to be uh, placed to, to prevent lateral seepage um, from, a, uh, um, from a leaking area. And that's a great application. I, I can't imagine any easier construction than going in with a small bucket excavator and doing a 12 or 18 inch trench that's 
five to six feet deep and then just backfilling it with the aqua block. And once that aqua block hydrates and swells, then you've created that hydraulic barrier and a cutoff application. And then like I talked about before, just repairs. So you see in the top left of um, animal hole being repaired. Uh, on the top right, there's a synthetic liner being repaired. Uh, just another crevice being repaired in the bottom left and then sealing around a leaking structure on the bottom right. So if you can come up with the application, there's probably a way that Aquavoc can be used for that repair. So I wanna go in through a, a couple of um, case studies, uh, just some areas where Aquavoc has been used successfully. Um, I emphasized a lot about anti-seat collars and trench drains. This was an application in uh, California um, for a, a large diameter sewer interceptor that was being installed in Northern California. And the specification originally called for a concrete anti-seep collar or a concrete trench dam. And when I say anti-seep collar trench dam, I, I usually use those terms synonymously. Um, they, they can be technically, you know, a, have some differences, but they're serving the same purpose. Um, water can find its way to the, uh, uh, I guess, the path of least resistance, which usually is along the side of a pipe where the trench backfill may not have been compacted as well as the surrounding soil. So water's gonna find that, I guess, that, or that, uh, that um, path of least resistance. And then you're gonna have a ter internal erosion along that pipeline uh, much faster than you will in other places. Uh, so we call that piping if you will, and you see it a lot as a culprit in uh, you know, some, some dam failures, uh, but it can be uh, problematic on um, just lateral utility line construction as well. So this, this pipeline is a project called for a, a rather large concrete anti-seep collar, and concrete can be problematic as well, especially when there's seismic considerations obviously in California, but um, just the cracking that can uh, occur with concrete, you've basically now you've opened up a, uh, an, an opportunity for water to seep through and along the pipeline in that cracked area. Uh, so in, in the expense of concrete for a large trench dam uh, can be prohibitive as well. So this is a standard detail for aqua block uh, for use in a trench dam, and this can be provided as part of uh, the um, um, send outs that, that Bill and his team will give to you guys after. But we've got a standard drop-in specification and standard detail drawing for trench dams and anti-seep collars. And uh, this was used for uh, basically a value engineering uh, design for this San Bruno project. Uh, you can see here that this was the first iteration of forms that were used. So they basically went in and built a wooden form like you would for a concrete um, pour around the pipe in the trench. We thought that this was, a, and they also thought this was a little bit overkill uh, to do it this way. So they kind of uh, adjusted their methodology as they went along and did others on this project. Um, but you can see that it, the, this was aqua block basically poured in and it was intermittently hydrated. So they sprayed down a lift and then put another lift in and sprayed it down. This was a, about a six or seven foot high trench dam and it was installed in about three lifts and then intermittently hydrated as it went up. Um, we recommended that they not pull the form out before they backfilled the trench around it. But lo and behold, they did that and the aqua block held up very, very well. So you can see the side there. This wouldn't, it, our specification spells it out to not do it this way. Uh, go ahead and backfill your anchor trench after uh, the, um, the aqua block's been put in and then pull the forms after that. Uh, but for this one, they had kind of an elaborate form. So they did that and it worked out fine. Uh, as they went along, they've got a little bit simpler with the form. And this is really all you need uh, to be able to go in and, and essentially get 
a barrier to put the aqua block in and create that form. And with the self compaction, you don't have to worry about, you know, the sheeting of the form falling over or coming apart when doing that compaction, because once it's poured and hydrates, it basically self compacts. So anti seep collars and trench dams, again, as I emphasize, probably the number one application for aqua block and a great alternative to other types of designs. Please, please let us work with you if you've got a, an opportunity where you need to go in and design these anti seep collars or trench dams. Um, sorry about that. This was a, uh, a project uh, in uh, Ohio. Very simple, uh, basically a finishing pond or a polishing pond for a, an effluent um, an effluent storage on a wastewater treatment facility. And as you can see, it's not supposed to be dry. Uh, they had a seep uh, down at the bottom of the, the berm or levee and uh, water was essentially escaping there and getting into the groundwater and flowing out somewhere where it wasn't supposed to be flown. Uh, so in this case, the simple solution was, let's create a vertical hydraulic barrier to prevent that lateral seepage from flowing through the bottom of the pond, in through the, out through the soil and down to an area where it's not supposed to be discharging. Uh, and it couldn't have been any simpler on the design and construction of this. Essentially, they just went in and dug the trench. And you can see uh, that loader there on the, the right turned around, it's got a small bucket and basically went down about four or five feet and then picked up that super sack that the aqua block is delivered in, opened up the bottom spout and just ran it along and poured it in till it was full. Now, you could, in a saturated condition, go ahead and pour all of the aqua block up to the top of the trench because it will continuously hydrate as you pour it in. But in this case, they actually did it in kind of a, a, a lift and go scenario. So you can see on the right, they're spraying that down as it's being installed. So put it in in a lift, spray it down, come back, put it in another one. But still the, the speed and the ease of installation of this cutoff trench couldn't have been uh, uh, much simpler to do. And so- I was yes, sorry to interrupt you. I was going to, I was going to yeah. jump in. This is Bill only because I'm the only other one that can talk. We got a question already on a previous picture. You showed a worker in a mask. And the question is, is this a dusty product when it's applied or is the um, mask that's a purpose? very good question? Uh, no, it's not because the cellulose binder will keep that bentonite um, adhered to on the gravel. So you should not get any off dusting on the product. Now, you know, there could be a little bit, um, but for the most part, it's, uh, you know, it's almost like a, like sticky um, to the touch. So you really won't get that, um, won't have a problem with that. He was probably wearing a mask for other reasons. Um, a lot but, of people uh, are nowadays. Yeah. All right, thanks. Keep rolling. You're, you're doing great. Okay. You're at 103 and doing great. Or 203 your time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're going to try to, yeah, I'm going to try to get this wrapped up about uh, uh, 115 your time so that we can have some uh, time for Q&A, correct? Yeah, they, yeah, but you're doing great. You're answering them as we go. So we're, we got plenty of time. You're doing fantastic. Um, so we went through this a little bit and talked about the trenching and the lifting. Uh, so you can see that's um, uh, probably about half finished where they went in and, uh, um, you know, did their first lift and are going to, come back and do another one. Um, so this has been in place for over 10 years now and has uh, uh, not had any issues with seepage since that aqua block uh, cutoff trench has been installed. Uh, I was actually out on a job site today uh, with a dam that has got some seeps. They've got some slushy areas on the bottom of the, uh, the backside bottom of the dam. Uh, it's indicative that you know, there's some depressional areas on the top of the dam where the soil's starting to, uh, um, you know, basically um, fall in a little bit. Um, the homeowners association is being proactive and uh, trying to do some kind of fix. So we're going to recommend that they do a cutoff trench 
down at the bottom of the pond uh, where the inflection point of the dam is uh, to create that hydraulic barrier. Now, most of the time we need to um, get to a, uh, an aqua clute, if you will, or, or some kind of confining layer um, to prevent the seepage under that. Uh, but on localized seeps on dams, usually can go in with a kind of a patch, a uh, trench and patch a little bit if you know exactly where it is. So we're going to do a little bit of a combination of that. And, I, you know, the dam has been there for 40 years. And after we do that, I don't see why it won't be there for 40 more. Um, this was a cool project. Um, it, it was actually in kind of rural Louisiana. And, and what you're seeing here in this picture is just a little uh, – um, uh, auto service place with a, a concrete parking and, and driveway. Uh, but you have, uh, what you see there is, is an outlet drain. There's also a very large cross drain that's under that pavement that goes out through the uh, state highway where this picture is being taken from. And um, you can see this hole, this sinkhole, that kind of opened up on the edge of the parking lot over here on the left. And then you can see the culprit here which is this disjointed uh, large diameter concrete, I mean, I'm sorry, a corrugated metal culvert. Uh, and then you've got a, a, another utility line in the same uh, area there. So essentially they had to go in and repair this and backfill it with a material that they felt confident would, um, would kind of seal up around that disjointed pipe. Uh, this is in southern Louisiana where the soils are, uh, uh, you know, very saturated most of the time, very, you know, clay and, uh, um, you know, uh, a good degree of organics and muck uh, mixed in. So um, not the best of materials to go back in and do any kind of structural or, or impervious backfill. Um, so... <laughs> I don't know what the uh, um, the adherence to OSHA standards here uh, on some of this trench repair was, but that wasn't really part of our uh, any of the scope of the Aquablock installation. But you can see they kind of did a sort of a makeshift mesh, uh, wire mesh to get that disjointed pipe put back together and some geotextile um, covering over that. And then basically, we took that area and um, had aqua block installed to backfill the entire trench and it or the uh, the whole area where the the repair was made uh, that actually that area actually took about close to thirty tons of aqua block to fill that up uh, so it was well over uh, uh, multiple cubic yards to get that uh, that area filled. Um, it would have been a nightmare trying to do some kind of uh, imported select backfill to get that in there and get it compacted around that pipe without doing damage to the pipe. So Aquablock was really an ideal material to go in here. You can see that it was placed in bag by bag, kind of lift by lift, <clears throat> and was able to support that other um, water line through there as well. <clears throat> you can see as it finishes out, just kind of rake it and spread it all the way up to the top. Now, usually we'll leave uh, roughly about six inches for cover soil on top of it. Um, that's probably a good rule of thumb. It could be more depending on what the, the surface is. If it's a lower traffic roadway, we might leave a little bit more area for cover soil. Uh, if it's higher loaded traffic roadway, we might even leave, you know, a good foot or two uh, and put some geotextile fabric on top of it. But that's a good, for that application, that was a good place to leave the aqua block. And then it was covered over um, with just uh, topsoil and regular soil cover. Uh, not a great picture of the finish, but um, I've been there since and it uh, actually is, uh, looks like it's, uh, there's never been a problem there. So just a, a, a good example of a, um, um, of a repair project where aqua block was used successfully. Um, this last project was uh, in Ohio. This is kind of probably our sig one of our signature installations. Um, there's a, uh, a public park, Franklin Park, in Columbus, Ohio, that's connected to uh, a conservatory uh, and botanical gardens. And it's become kind of a, a, 
I guess, an attraction within Columbus, but it was constructed, the park was constructed back in the early 90s as part of an international festival that was held in Columbus. And essentially at that point, they came in and built a hydraulic system. So an upper lake and an, a lower lake and kind of a cascade waterfall system between the two. Um, that was built in 1991. And then they started having issues with it uh, mid 2000s. Uh, they were losing water and essentially went in and put about a half a million dollar pump system upgrade to, uh, to keep the water moving through the ponds, recycle back and uh, circulate down through the Cascade waterfalls. Um, they realized a year or two after the pump system was uh, refurbished that they were still losing water and they just had too much sandy soil underneath that the water was escaping through and seeping down into the groundwater. So they needed to line this area. They probably, in hindsight, they probably should have gone and done some kind of synthetic liner at the beginning when they had the whole uh, area torn up for construction. But going back into this area and trying to do a synthetic liner with an anchor trench and all through and, and getting a, a good smooth subgrade would have been nearly impossible. So we're talking about trying to seal an area and create an impervious barrier uh, to prevent seepage without using a synthetic, you know, HDP or some other kind of plastic liner. So this is a great application for an aqua block uh, because it could be easily installed across these areas and you can see some pictures here in a minute. Um, here up in the top or left, top left, you can see some of the grading that was done. Um, now they did do some dewatering, but this place had gotten pretty dry by the time they went in to do this construction. Over here in the top right, this is the, the kind of the, the constructed cascades or call it an artificial waterfall. But up here is the upper pond, uh, you know, draining down to the lower pond. So they did a couple of um, new areas of concrete, some new gravel areas. But in came the aqua block and around the, uh, sorry about that, around the, the different ponds, they actually did kind of a header curb and basically dumped and raked aqua block in on some of the side slopes. But here you can see uh, this is a great app, uh, way to distribute the aqua block is through a telebelt or stone slinger. And you can see that that was kind of able to evenly broadcast it across some of the bottom areas. Uh, look at this picture on the top left. You can see that excavator that's deep in that muck. And then you can see that, uh, that stone slinger truck throwing the aqua block out there. Now, can you imagine um, trying to install some kind of synthetic liner on that type of subgrade? That, that's just not gonna happen. So um, basically, you know, being able to come in here and do this, saving a lot of time and money without having to do additional grading. You can see there's, you know, a mixture of gravel uh, and aqua block. Some of this gravel is actually covering some of the aqua block as well. Uh, this was finished pictures. I uh, believe this is the upper pond up here and in in the cascades are beyond that bridge. Uh, so this all area that was dry and it uh, basically seeped down and leaked is now uh, part of the um, refurbished Franklin Park Pond. Uh, and you can see some of the areas here um, as well. And so this has become kind of a, a, a signature project for Aqua Block. We probably used, um, oh, I'd say uh, eight to 10 truckloads of material to broadcast evenly across these ponds and the Cascade areas. Uh, so you can see this operational uh, waterfall cascade after the uh, Aqua Block was installed. So to, to wrap up here a little bit, um, this is kind of our packaging options with AquaBlock. So we do have a uh, more of a you know smaller project slash homeowner type of um, package, 50 pound bag, um, quick supply, ASP, Bowman will all keep, uh, um, usually keep a pallet or so of these bags so that if uh, for smaller uh, smaller applications 
uh, usually fills up about a, a half of a cubic foot. Uh, and then, like I said before, we do a 2,400 and a 2,700 pound bulk bag. Um, so we're talking about, you know, around a cubic yard. Uh, and you can see some of the applications. You know, this 2,400 pound bag is probably enough for a, uh, a six by six by one trench dam around a 36 inch pipe. Uh, so that gives you a, kind of a scale. The only reason, the only, uh, or one of the advantages doing the 2,700 pound bulk bag is that there's the same amount of volume on a truck, but there's two less bags uh, with the larger bag, so there's less material handling. Um, so that is uh, uh, options. Now, we if there's a larger project, we can go to a loose bulk delivery. Uh, that can be a little bit more complicated, but um, for a, a, a very, very large project, it would make sense. Uh, but if you get to the point where it's even larger than that, uh, and I'll get into that in a minute, but here's some of the installation techniques. Um, so easy to install by just putting it in a bucket, clamshell, front end loader, uh, dumping it directly into the places that you need it. Uh, the telebelt slinger installation, if it needs to be broadcast evenly, or uh, simply just opening the bag and dumping it into where it needs to go. Uh, lastly, we do have an option on a very, very large project where we can bring the manufacturing to the site. Um, you know, freight can be cost prohibitive for Aquablock since we're um, manufacturing in Ohio. Um, if we're delivering to, you know, Midwestern states, it's, um, uh, it can be, um, um, the freight doesn't, isn't as much of a burden, but if we're delivering to the West Coast or the extreme East Coast, freight can be uh, uh, substantial. So at some point, there's a break point where we can actually pack up um, a lot of the equipment that we use to do the manufacturing with, have the bentonite shipped to the job site, and then basically source local aggregate uh, to cut down on that shipping and be able to make the product right there for the application. And we've done that on several occasions. Uh, actually, we're about to do it uh, here in the next few months in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, for a uh, containment application for some uh, contaminated sediment areas where we're actually going to manufacture the aqua block right there in the harbor area to be able to install it. Um, there. So, so that's an option as well. And we can work with, you know, ASP or quick supply or Bowman to be able to, to work that out. So I thank you guys for your time today. We've got about a, a 12 minutes left or so on the allotted time. And I'll ask uh, Bill to uh, um, go to any questions that we have or uh, anything else you'd like to talk about, Bill. Yeah, I'm going to take away control from you. Thank you, Andy. Um, okay. I'll give you the clap. Nobody else can clap for you. We do have another question on the Q&A that's uh, good timing for it. And the question is, are the storage bags waterproof? And if not, what happens if the Aquablock hydrates yeah. in the bag? Oh, great question. No, they, they, they aren't really waterproof. And I would say that um, here's, here's the thing, is that we try to keep Aquablock stored uh, as dry as possible, but it doesn't necessarily have to be inside storage. It, if it's tarped correctly and it's lifted up on a pallet or something uh, to keep it out of standing water, then there's not a true risk of you know, early hydration. Uh, you certainly don't want it in any kind of standing water. Um, it needs to be pulled out of that. And you certainly don't want to leave it untarped. But if you, even if you double stack it and tarp it, um, and get it up out of uh, water, then it should be fine for outdoor, outdoor storage. Well, I, I wouldn't probably, six to nine months is about the maximum before, you know, you probably just want to either use it or get it inside. That's a good one. Well, thank you for answering that. And we are doing yep. great on time. It's only 119. And I'm going to get into a couple more questions. But first, I want to remind everybody that if you know of someone that might benefit from AquaBlock, Contact me or anybody at ASP, Quick Supply, or Bowman, 
or Andy's contact information as part of this presentation. And we are recording this presentation. We'll store it on our website and we'll make that available to you guys if you need to refer back to something or just reach out to any of us with your questions. Once again, you'll have the survey monkey. That'll be an opportunity to throw out any questions you have when you reply to us. One thing I think we didn't ask was if you put your company name on the survey monkey right now, we just asked for your name and email address. If your company name's in your email address, it's easy enough. But for those of you that use Gmail or Yahoo or AOL or something else, uh, let us know your company name. We are really encouraging people to set up a lunch and learn as well or a lounge and learn if they're not back in the office. And if we're if you're back in the office, any of our ASP Enterprises or Quick Supply Company or Bowman Construction Supply sales team would be happy to bring lunch to your office and sit there and help facilitate uh, an online presentation like this. So Andy covers a very large area and he's readily available to do these. Um, he's able to fit in a, um, a, a presentation even when he's out on the go. So we got a, another question here was what is, and you may have said this and Andy, I'm sorry if you did, uh, mm -hmm. but I've been asked this before. What is the average thickness for pond ceiling? Yeah, it's a good question. So typically one inch, coverage of aqua block will swell to two inches uh, and that usually gets you to all the um, or the lowest hydraulic conduct conductivity that you really need uh, the only issue is that it's it's kind of hard to get a consistent covering with one inch so we typically recommend you know one and a half to two inches now it's it's diminishing once you get to two inches you're not going to swell to four inches so an inch and a half will usually swell to about you know between two and a half and three inches and that's probably a good rule of thumb uh, for a pond stealing application thank you for that and then another question just came in um, and Rick always asks great questions he attends all of our webinars I count on him to ask good questions and I'd actually written the question down but I wasn't sure if it was fair to ask you in front of everybody Andy I'm looking at it right now well I got a I'm gonna re rephrase it so okay. um, one of the things I wanted to mention was if the product is when it's saturated is swollen and sometimes right. people spray it when they install it or do they That's always right. spray it what happens if that site becomes subject later to extended drought is there significant settling? Yeah, that's that's a good question. So if it does, if there is extended drought, you could see some surface desiccation. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Um, you know, if you've got, if you're essentially protected, uh, if you've got some cover soil over it, um, you know, as soon as you get some hydration back to it, it's going to, you know, that rehydration will, you know, basically, you know, break those molecules apart and sheets again and swell and absorb again. So it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's, you know, perpetual, but it's, you know, a continuously hydrating performing product. Um, I, you know, the danger is if you're doing a thin layer uh, on a pond or something that goes dry for whatever reason, uh, just evaporation or outlet or, or whatever, and then it sits there prolonged dry, um, you know, you could get some desiccation cracking where you're going to, uh, um, you're going to diminish your permeable, your hydraulic conductivity. But I, that, that would be, you know, a case by case that we'd be able to look at with you. And if you get called back, is it some? Is it usually just a matter of finding the the area that needs more aqua block? Not trying to oversell here, but isn't that wouldn't that be the typical solution? More, more or less, yeah. I mean, it would be kind of evaluating. You know what? I, I would say you know if you get that telltale desiccation cracking. Now you'll get it a lot more. Um, you know, with a uh, with a you know compacted compacted clay liner. Um, you know, that could be problematic. And that's why, you know, you're usually, you know, minimum 12 inches thick on a wow. compacted clay. So, wow. um, I would, you know, it, it would be, yes, it would be kind of a repair scenario. I, to be, be honest with you, Bill, it, it, it would not seen it happen. Okay, you know, good. Very, it's, it's been very rare that we've had a, a desiccation issue, but, what? um, one of the questions I was going to ask you um, early on was about 
and you mentioned it, but I, I have to have things repeated for me to retain it, was how how is aqua block better than just bentonite for a cutoff trench or an anti-seep collar? But Rick had a, another question that's going to compare to just bentonite and, and bowmanite under landfills. Well, so when you... <laughs> So let me, um, when you say Bowmanite, or, I, I'm guessing my, my uh, assumption is that you're, you're talking about a, a little bit different clay material than, um, than Bentonite. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with, with that in, in landfill applications. So maybe um, we can tell you touch on it with writing because we're going to answer all these same questions with a little bit of written answer when we send them out in a few days. So I would say that um, use of any product like this on a under a landfill application, I would just categorically say that um, there hasn't been a lot of usage of aqua block or you know any kind of composite type bentonite material as part of a composite liner system that would meet RECRA standards. And I don't know, um, I don't know anything about bowmanite. So I just, that's why I said it. I've heard the term, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, where you see it, and I hope I'm, I'm, I'm not just fumbling around with this question, but I guess my best answer is, is that on a landfill application, your, your go-to, system is RECRA, which is 24 inches of compacted clay liner or a GCL, which contains bentonite in it, and then a flexible membrane liner on top of that. All um, right. If you deviate from that, you're looking at some pretty hefty, you know, uh, uh, requirements for, for alternative permitting. Not to say it can't be done, but that's usually not a, um, an application that aqua block would be used for. And I will say, um, in defense of our company, we have sales guys or salespeople, at ASP, Quick Supply, and Bowman that are familiar with um, the landfill industry. And we have a lot of other products, rolled products, liners, synthetic sure. materials, um, a lot of membranes. We deal in a lot of those. Uh, so we're actually a great resource for them to reach out to us. Because even when I sit here and say, I don't know, because I love honesty, um, I, I will find out. Because I don't, when I say I don't know something, I don't not know it for very long. <laughs> yeah. I, I love learning. So um, one of the things that I was going to mention here as we're wrapping up at 127 is we are blessed to have a lot of different manufacturers of a lot of different solutions. So we're able to put together a whole lot of um, different solutions for each individual project or multiple projects. Right. And when we talk about delivering these um, super sacks, Andy and I talked before this webinar, we have super sacks. I've seen them. So to the previous question, I've seen the super sacks sitting on a pallet with a tarp over them in our um, outdoor yards, not for very long. We don't need them sitting around taking up space for very long. We, we move our products quickly. But um, Andy and I talked about just drop shipping directly at a project site for a lot of these large projects. So we have all the options. We have the small bags. We have super sacks. We can um, have, have you directly ship it. Uh, yeah. One of the things here oh, on the way out, Rick has just said the end purpose is to prevent leachate into the groundwater. Um, and that's yeah. consistent with what you said, Andy. So yeah, it, project, uh, project, man, they just need to reach out to right. us and let us know what their needs are and we can work with them on solutions. Absolutely. And, and I would say more generally, Rick, um, I, aqua block is great in um, a lot of cover applications. So, where you're breaching a, a, a synthetic cover to do a landfill gas well repair or landfill gas well installation, um, backfilling or plugging that uh, that breach with the aqua block. That's a great application on a landfill. Perfect. Thank you for answering that. So yeah. with that, I'm going to let everybody know the same thing I said before. Uh, please answer the Survey Monkey. It's not a scam. We don't sell your information. Uh, we just want to make sure we know who we're working with. We'll get written answers to these questions. Um, along with the standard details Andy mentioned, we can send that out as well when we send out the PDH certificate. Join us in two weeks. Uh, I had originally said August 8th. That was a mistake. I can't skip the month of July. Uh, I love Independence Day. And be safe with your fireworks. I'm a legend with my fireworks. 
But on Wednesday, July 8th, Tom Bowman from Rocky Mountain Bioproducts in Colorado, um, that's part of our team, will give a presentation on Biosol Organic Fertilizer. So Andy, thank you for that. It's 1.30. We're going to wrap this up. Um, we'll stay in touch with everybody and share your information, Andy, with uh, all the attendees. Great. Thanks, Bill. All right. Take care.